Many early arcade games used vector style graphics, which are lines that give a 3D like perspective. But many home consoles opted to use a tile based hardware system with RGB color graphics. So here's a question then, was vector graphics too advanced for home consoles? Surprisingly, there was one company that did try to bring this type of hardware to households. Let's take a look. What's going on? It's Poger coming at you with another video. All right, so we're at 36,000 subscribers right now. I'm going to try to set a sub goal. I'm thinking maybe 40,000 by the springtime. If you want to help me get there, hit that subscribe button right down there. And we currently got 600 members on Discord. If you want to be a part of it, just go to discord.poger.net. Anyway, let's talk about the Vectrex. Presenting the revolutionary Vectrex arcade system. Ordinary home video games can't match the laser-sharp visual effects of Vectrex because only Vectrex has a real arcade screen built in. No TV set needed. So every Vectrex... So what exactly are vector style graphics? It's when images are created from geometric shapes. If you zoom into a raster style image, you will start to see the pixelation, but vector style images will still keep their detail no matter how far you zoom in. Atari would play around with this form of graphics. In Asteroids, while the game is not 3D, the objects on screen all have perfect rotation. Nothing looks pixelated whatsoever. Battlezone used vector graphics really well. The objects on screen move fluently and the 3D effect is very convincing. Vector graphics could be used in all types of games. The title Major Havoc has platformer stages, which is not the type of genre I would have expected for a vector game. Tempest is a unique shooter where your ship is able to rotate 360 degrees. The game also zooms in without any pixelation whatsoever. Vector graphics had a lot of advantages. You could zoom in and rotate objects without any loss of detail. Despite that though, home consoles were using raster style graphics. Even Atari, who was a big fan of vector graphics, opted not to use them for the 2600. Atari's console was not capable of scaling or rotation, so the 3D effects from their arcade titles were not possible on here. Every frame of animation eats up ROM space, which meant there couldn't be much graphical detail. The Atari 2600 got asteroids as well, but it was very scaled down. Your ship can rotate, but it was done manually using multiple frames of animation, and the asteroids don't rotate at all. Still though, this is a remarkable achievement that a vector style game was ported over to a raster style console. So if raster style graphics have these disadvantages, why did nearly every console manufacturer go with it? You could do cool things with vector style graphics, but they do look bland. It's just a bunch of lines. There's no color or even a way to fill in the shapes with a solid color. You mostly just see a black screen. You're very limited on what kind of games you can make when all you have to work with are lines. Vector arcade machines were also prone to breaking down easily, so they required a lot of maintenance. Using vector graphics in the home console market was not the best choice if you wanted the console to last many years. The ability to have colorful graphics was also worth not having easy rotation or 3D graphics. The good definitely outweighed the bad. But there was one company that thought otherwise. The idea initially came from John Ross from the company Smith Engineering. After finding a small CRT at a warehouse, he wondered if it was possible to make an all-in-one game console from it. Ross and his friends would create a working prototype. The console was originally going to be called the Mini Arcade and it was going to be portable, but later on it would become a much larger tabletop console. The product would be officially licensed by General Consumer Electronics who would market and sell it. In October of 1982, the Vectrex was released in some regions and then would receive a full nationwide release in 1983. The full retail price was $200, which was $10 more than the Atari 2600. The console was like no other one at the time. Instead of a unit that you plug into a TV, the console itself has a TV built in. You also get overlays that substitute for the lack of color. The most unique feature though is the support for vector graphics. This is the first vector style console that has ever been brought to the home console market. The hardware was impressive for its time. The unit was pre-installed with 8 kilobytes of ROM space while games could carry up to 32 kilobytes. To compare, the Atari 2600 didn't have any built-in ROM space and games could only carry up to 4 kilobytes without bank switching. 
The Vectrex also had 1 kilobyte of RAM compared to the 2600's 128 bytes. The console didn't quite beat its other competitors though. The ColecoVision had the same amount of built-in ROM space and cartridge ROM space at 8 kilobytes and 32 kilobytes respectively. That console came out before too. So while the Vectrex is definitely not number one in the hardware department, its main selling point is the vector style graphics. With the initial sales being excellent, Milton Bradley took notice of the Vectrex and decided to purchase General Consumer Electronics. This was huge because it gave the Vectrex a much bigger footprint. Milton Bradley would distribute the console in Europe and then would license it to Bandai for a Japanese release. Without Milton Bradley, the console would have most likely stayed in the US. Anyway, let's take a deep dive and see what the games are all about. Let's try Cosmic Chasm. You play as a spaceship who must shoot down the enemies and then advance to the next screen. You can't be on the same screen for too long because the center will get bigger and bigger. You're actually maneuvering around a decent sized map where you're supposed to find the reactor room. Once you do, you place a bomb there and then escape the level within 15 seconds. There's multiple force fields that lead to a different path that you have to shoot down. The game uses tank controls similar to Asteroids. It actually doesn't feel too bad. You have a barrier that you can use to deflect enemies. Considering how fast they get in the later stages, this is very necessary to use. The force fields are annoying because you can't just shoot them down. You're supposed to slowly inch towards them and then use your drill to take them down. This is the only purpose of the drill and it just seems like an unnecessary mechanic. Your lasers also have a very small hitbox which means they almost never line up with the enemies. The game does make some use of vector graphics like the smooth rotation of your ship. Overall, this is a solid game. In a rare twist, Cosmic Chasm would be released in arcades after the Vectrex version. You usually don't hear about home console games that get ported to the arcade. Here's Clean Sweep. It's a Pac-Man clone with an interesting twist. You start off as a vacuum that grows in size each time you sweep up more dots. If you become too large, you're unable to collect dots. If you return to the center of the screen, you shrink back down to your original size and you can collect dots again. In the later stages, you grow in size much quicker than before, which makes it harder to collect dots. Instead of power pellets, you can enter these tight spaces that temporarily make you invulnerable. So in short, it's basically Pac-Man, but you're not always able to collect dots. It's understandable why they created this game. They needed their own version of one of the most popular titles of the time to compensate for the poor library of games. Your character does zoom in and out, which is another attribute of vector style graphics. It's a decent game overall. Web Wars is a very unique title. You play as a bird who moves around in a 3D environment. You can shoot enemies as well as capture them with your beam. Your goal is to capture 20 different enemies. If you're too slow, a dragon will show up and try to destroy you. This game really shows off the capabilities of the Vectrex. Not only do you play in a 3D environment, but the screen actually moves with you which gives an impressive 3D look. The game is often compared to Tempest, although the mechanics are much different. This is one of the better games in the Vectrex library. The console did receive a few licensed games. Pole Position is one of them. You start off in a qualifier and you must complete a lap in a certain amount of time to qualify for the final race. Once you do, you keep playing until the time runs out. This is the hardest version of Pole Position I've ever played. In the qualifier, you get barely enough time to meet the requirement. If you make one small error, you might as well reset. It's very hard to avoid your opponents because the hitboxes are so weird. Graphically, the game does show off the capabilities of the Vectrex. Pole Position didn't get released on many consoles, so it's great that the Vectrex got it. While we're talking about racing games, Hyper Chase is a decent one. It's like Pole Position, but you're always going straight. Your main obstacle is the other cars. This actually feels more like Road Fighter on the NES than it does Pole Position. The game makes great use of the Vectrex's abilities, with many background graphics that scale very smoothly. It's a decent game overall. Scramble is another licensed game that received a Vectrex release. It's an early horizontal shooter from Konami. You can shoot as well as drop missiles below. Not only do you have to worry about what's in front of you, but there's also enemies on the ground. You also have to shoot down gas tanks in order to refill your fuel. In the later stages, you'll have to navigate through tight areas and avoid the walls. While the game is dull in comparison to other shooters, it's actually the first scrolling shooter ever made. Like with Pole Position, it wasn't released on many consoles, so the Vectrex got lucky again. Berserk is another huge release for the Vectrex. You play in a top-down perspective and you're able to shoot in 8 different directions. You must shoot down as many enemies as possible to get the high score. If you take too long, Evil Auto will make an appearance and try to destroy you. To complete the stage, you just have to walk through one of the exits. It doesn't matter which one. 
you don't have to kill all the enemies on the screen to progress, just as many as you can. I always found this game to be a little underpolished. I think the developers should have required you to destroy every enemy before you can progress. The way it is now, Evil Auto will never pose a threat because you can exit whenever you want. You can easily make it through the game without destroying any enemies, but it wouldn't make any sense because you're not getting points that way. I also think there should be an incentive to use one exit over another. These are complaints about Berserk in general though, not against the Vectrex version. In fact, this is a very solid arcade port. I mean, the walls are all lines anyway, which makes Berserk an excellent candidate for a vector style game. Unfortunately though, they didn't bring over the voices from the arcade version. Despite my opinions, this is a well-liked title, so it's great that the Vectrex got it. The Vectrex was a one of a kind. If you wanted arcade style graphics on a home console, the Vectrex was your only option. Literally. The cool effects that were pulled off in some of the games were impossible in other consoles. There was no other platform that offered vector style graphics. There's also great games on here. I had an excellent time with titles like Cosmic Chasm and Web War. I do have to acknowledge some of the weaknesses though. The Vectrex had a very poor lineup of only 28 games. There was no third party support whatsoever. General Consumer Electronics was literally the only developer that made games for the Vectrex. The lack of licensed games really hurt the console too. Atari is one of the most well-known developers of vector style games. It's really too bad that the Vectrex didn't have access to some of those games like Asteroids or Tempest. There were games that were similar, but not the real thing. The lack of games was definitely a missed opportunity. I am surprised at the diversity of games, but the Vectrex is still a one-trick pony. There's only so much you can do with a bunch of lines on the screen. Other home consoles, despite not being able to perform 3D effects, had more versatile hardware. Not only can they support multiple colors, but you have more control in general over the graphics. Some games look completely different from one another simply because you can do more with the console. The Vectrex on the other hand, it gets boring to look at. Milton Bradley originally bought the rights to the Vectrex because of the high sales, but they would end up regretting this decision shortly after. The console did not have much time to shine, as it was released in October of 1982. This was only months away from the upcoming video game crash. The market was being oversaturated with mediocre game consoles and there was no quality control. As a result, game consoles would stop being profitable because consumers lost interest in them. With no one buying video games, the Vectrex was not selling well. Milton Bradley tried to hang on by dropping the price, even by a whopping 50%, but it was not enough to stay alive. There was some talk about making a successor to the Vectrex. This one would have a color screen and would be portable like they originally wanted to do, but it would never happen. The Vectrex was discontinued in 1984, lasting just over a year. It's too bad because the Vectrex was not a bad console. It did have some disadvantages over its competition, but I think it could have functioned alongside the others. If the console had third party support and a better lineup of games, maybe that could have helped the longevity of the Vectrex, but unfortunately it was just another victim of the video game crash. Hey, I just wanted to thank you so much for watching this video. If you made it this far, hit that like button. If you enjoy this type of content, hit the subscribe button for more content. Both of these things really help the channel grow. If you have anything to share, feel free to leave a comment. I read every single comment on this channel, and I'm pretty good at replying back. Anyway, have a good one.